So here we are at uh, Uncle's Farm, formerly known as Uncle's Farm, and it seems that there was something on this site, a small building perhaps, a hovel, uh, from about the 1600s onwards. It's only fairly small at 13 acres, and it took on a, a different meaning in the 1914 period when the Quayle family moved down here from Liverpool as followers of John Ruskin. And the I ideals were to live here in community with various other people at places like Oak Grove and Affelgarth up through the woods there and St George's Farm further down the track and to try and live out some of Ruskin's ideas about the rural economy. One of Ruskin's ideas and those who follow Ruskin know he had many many different ideas was that he wanted to build a museum here uh, in the forest in Bewdley to actually where he would display his uh, collection of Turner watercolours, the um, plaster casts that he collected from Venice, his own drawings and so he had pl plans drawn up by uh, Southall for a museum here in the forest. Now what we've taken is that idea uh, to do something around art and connecting it to the natural environment but to do it here at Uncles, and that's why we're calling this new building that we're building uh, the Ruskin Studio. It will be a place where people can come and paint and draw and learn about the rural economy and how they might make a contribution themselves. Okay, so once we'd got the uh, design clear, the next thing was to generate a cutting list of all the different timber that we required and uh, then selected the trees in the forest, uh, very close to our farm actually, that would fulfil the list of timbers that we needed. Uh, and then after all the timber had been cut down, it was uh, dragged and stored at Uncles, ready to be sawn up into the right size uh, timbers uh, with the mobile saw bench. Then some of the timbers, the main uh, large timbers that would form the oak frame, uh, those were taken over to uh, Stephen Wall's yard at uh, Kinver and he cut them to length, uh, made all the joints and as you can see started to actually uh, number each of the joints in a traditional craftsman's way so that the whole frames could be reassembled back on site when they were required. Timbers were then brought back to Uncle's farm, uh, offloaded on from the lorry and then craned into place very, very carefully. Uh, each truss being put together on the ground first and then gently lifted into place with the crane. And it's at times like this that you really respect the craftspeople who do this type of work. In fact it took a whole week uh, of very careful lifting with the crane to get the four main trusses in place 
and uh, once they were actually lifted uh, Ron had devised a method of keeping them uh, accurately in place before the purlins were then put on later. The next stage then was to lift the joists into place and uh, these were put down so that it provided a, working, a safe working platform uh, for the guys then working on the roof. And once the uh, main roof structure was in place, the purlins, which are the lateral uh, pieces, were put in place, then the rafters, and then after that we could then put up the uh, plywood sheeting, the insulation, and ultimately the slate roofing. What we've done, we've put counter buttons on top of the rafters, over the top of the plywood, and now we're putting the insulation over the roof which is this super quilt which is built up of several layers of foil and foam and other items. So what I've just done here uh, with Mark's help is that we've taken some of these planks which are sawn out of the oak trees from over there and uh, we've cut two grooves down the back of them with the router and this stops the wood sort of curling as the sun dries it out and then what we've done is we've cut the rebate down each side here so that when they go on the building they're overlapping and that will give us our weatherproof outer covering for the building. We chose slate, uh, the original farm building as you'll see from other shots is uh, handmade tiles. You can see here how the slate has to be carefully cut around the brackets that will hold the solar panels in place. This was quite a tricky job to do and used up quite a lot of lead making sure that those joints were weather tight. Before the end of the year as winter started to close in we made sure that the building was weather tight uh, so that work could continue inside through the winter months. Whey! One of the um, things I wanted to do today was just to sort of note this as a very important stage in the whole project uh, where we've actually got a watertight roof, um, we've got the photovoltaics reconnected again and one of the most important things that Linda's decided what sort of gutters to have as well. So an important day. You know, a big thank you to all for what you've done so far. You know, and over the next few weeks we'll be putting in the windows and you know a lot more work inside and, and sadly it will come to an end. Here's to whatever we're gonna call it. Yeah. 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 I've got a little prayer. Come on. Are you down? Yes. Are we down my little prayer? Yeah. Dear Lord, thank you for this beautiful building made by the skill of these men using the natural materials that you've provided. We ask that you continue to watch over their work and keep them safe and bless the building, guiding us to use it for your glory. Amen. Amen. Work inside including putting up the studs and uh, insulating boards to make the walls, the internal walls, uh, laying very thick insulation down on the floor, uh, then on top of that the underfloor heating pipes and then finally a scree over those pipes uh, together with tiling for the bathroom area and the entrance hall and then once all the flooring had set a week or so later we were able to start the construction of the staircase. The staircase was made by Matthew Tyrrell who also did the windows and doors. On the first floor we then used more uh, oak boards to make the flooring there onto which sat this huge uh, 750 litre water tank which acts as a thermal accumulator linked up with the wood burning stove and the solar hot water panels on the roof. This tank enables us to take heat out into the underfloor heating system first thing in the morning uh, before the wood burning stove has really got going and enables us to provide a nice comfortable env environment for visiting schools and groups 
uh, first thing in the morning. Uh, the building's nearing completion, uh, the weather's got better and our thoughts are turning to what we're going to be using this building for rather than just all our energy on actually getting it built. And the sort of things that we plan to happen here are primarily around education and training. That we've been able to do with the support of Natural England uh, to actually contribute to the funding of the building. So that will be a base for farm visits, uh, for training courses, learning more about uh, farming and rural skills. But also it will be a base for our care farming operation where we have people of all sorts of different abilities and needs who come here for a sort of therapeutic reason rather than just uh, to actually work on the farm. And then there will be a whole range of other activities that Linda's trying to develop uh, which are much more to do about arts and crafts and I'll let her talk about that to you. Because this place is, uh, is so special and so beautiful and has a real peaceful atmosphere we wanted to use it um, to inspire people, uh, a place where people could come and enjoy the peace and quiet of it and um, we're having Mondays as a day when folk can come and do their own thing and use the studio as a mini retreat, um, do some prayer and meditation or some drawing or painting and just use the place as a base. Um, we're also going to have craft events to make use of the wonderful light in the building and the surroundings to um, use natural materials and use the, the surrounding landscape as inspiration. So we'll have things like uh, uh, weaving, a lovely um, Jacob's wool weaving going on here and uh, rag rug making, basket making, uh, charcoal drawing, painting. We're, we're trying to carry on the uh, Ruskinian theme of helping people to really observe and appreciate nature. Okay, so now the building's uh, nearing completion, our thoughts turn to uh, preparing for the formal opening of the building on June the 29th when the master of the Guild of St George, Clive Wilmer, will be declaring uh, the building open and dedicating it for the purposes of taking forward Ruskin's vision for this little place in the middle of Worcestershire.